Review copy provided by Steam Forged Games. Chris Redfield. Resident Evil. Solo Board Gaming Night here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Resident Evil, the board game. As always, I'm going to give you an overhead view of the table so you get an idea of just how much space the game takes up. Fair warning, there are a lot of different scenarios. And the amount of space that each scenario takes on the table is going to vary. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the box and see what's inside. The box cover shows a very iconic scene from the original Resident Evil. The Spencer Mansion looks great on the cover. Unfortunately, the insert lacks any way to easily set up and tear down the game. I removed the included insert and created my own. This allowed me to organize the cards in a way that will quickly allow me to set up the game. I used the craft box from Hobby Lobby to organize all the tokens and miniatures. Thankfully, I purchased the Bleak Outpost expansion and used that box to store all of the tiles, the craft box, the rule books, and the scenario book. Doing this allowed me to easily store the game. The rule book gets you started quickly. Just a few pages in and you'll be going on a tutorial mission. However, you'll then be learning the rest of the rules needed to play. There are 35 pages of total rules to read. Thankfully, there's a very handy quick reference guide in the back of the rule book. The scenario book is clearly illustrated and makes setting up the map easy. Gone is the thin and floppy map dashboard of Resident Evil 3. The devs listened to our plea and we now have a beautiful, thick, lenticular image of the iconic zombie on one side and a dashboard on the other with all the spots needed for cards and storage items. The map is now card based and much, much better than the Resident Evil 3's cheaply made map dashboard. The miniatures are very similar to Resident Evil 3's miniatures. The grotesque zombies, the tyrant and Lisa Trevor look great. The expansions Plant 42 and Neptune also look amazing. It wouldn't be Resident Evil without our beloved STARS members. With that out of the way, let's go over just the basics on how to play the game. Since I already went over how to play the game in my Resident Evil 3 review, I'm just going to focus on what's new to Resident Evil, the board game. The action, reaction, and tension phases all make a return. Unlike Resident Evil 3, which had you create the entire scenario map, Resident Evil has you just build a portion of the map. As you explore the scenario, the map expands and all new locations can be explored. You no longer roll a die and refer to the encounter table like was necessary in Resident Evil 3 when exploring new tiles. Now, when you enter a tile, if it has an unexplored token on it, it will let you know how many encounter cards you need to draw and resolve. Sometimes, a mission will be presented to you. When this happens, you can use any character you have in reserve to go on that mission. You can abandon a mission if you feel that it's not going well 
in an attempt to save your reserve character from dying. The top part of the encounter cards are used to determine the outcome of the mission. You then reap the rewards if you complete the mission and your reserve character returns to the dashboard with all of the damage sustained, if any. The mission card is removed from the game unless it has this unique symbol on it. If so, shuffle it back into the mission deck. If your reserve character dies during a mission, remove that character from the campaign. You can also switch characters with any main character in the reserve pile. Refer to the rulebook to learn more. The storage box now holds an infinite amount of items. This is a much welcome change. If a zombie is killed, a corpse is placed in its space. This is new to the zombies. Whenever you take an action and are in a space with a corpse, you have to roll the black die. If it lands on the umbrella symbol, the zombie reanimates. This is very faithful to the source material. You can use an action and light a corpse on fire if you have a lighter and a kerosene token to spend. Once again, this is just like the video game. As mentioned earlier, you don't build the entire map like you did with Resident Evil 3. Now you only build a small portion of the scenario. The scenario book lets you know where you should build the map to ensure that you have enough space on your table once the map expands. This works really well and it really helps with the initial setup time. Here's a useful tip. To keep track of which scenarios have been completed on the map, create dividers to keep track of completed map cards and locked map cards. Trust me, you'll thank me later. That's everything new to Resident Evil, the board game. Now, I'd like to share a quick story with you. My first job was working at a newspaper company. I saved my first couple of checks and when I had enough money, I made my way to the electronics department of Sears. <laughs> Remember Sears? That day, I purchased the PlayStation along with a copy of Resident Evil Director's Cut. Unfortunately, at that time, memory cards were foreign to me and I didn't even know they were needed to save game progress. For an entire week, I played Resident Evil without saving. At that point, I just attempted to see how far I could get without saving. By week's end, I had made enough money to purchase a memory card for my PlayStation. Little did I know that I was about to experience some of my favorite video game moments of all time. From that moment forward, I became a huge Resident Evil fan. I have played every single Resident Evil game that has released since then. Almost 30 years later and I find myself reviewing a board game based on one of my favorite games of all time. Resident Evil, the board game. Now, on to the review. Resident Evil, the board game is incredibly faithful to the source material. Exploring the corridors and rooms without knowing what lurks ahead brings the same tension the video game is known for. Picking up items and adding them to your limited inventory brings a smile to my face. The fear of passing a zombie hoping it doesn't reanimate is awesome. Using keys to unlock doors and items to solve puzzles really does bring back so much nostalgia from the video game. Not knowing what to expect around the corner and exploring the Spencer Mansion and beyond is all about slowly unlocking and exploring every nook and cranny of the Spencer Mansion and that is incredibly faithfully recreated here. Even the safe room manages to bring calm to the tension. Just take a look at the lenticular image included with the dashboard. Iconic. Unfortunately, the dark tiles from the previous game are still found here. Playing with the included tokens makes the game 
difficult to play because it's hard to see where the doors are and if they're opened or closed. I purchased 3D Terrain a few years ago from Etsy to be able to replace those dark tokens and use 3D doors instead. What a game changer. I recommend this to everyone interested in playing Resident Evil. Not only does it look great on the table, but it also makes the map significantly easier to see and understand. Add a few walls and you have a beautiful and hauntingly great game to play. The game is playable with included tokens, but the 3D terrain really does bring it to life. You can play any scenario as a one-off. Some of you may have noticed that I haven't uploaded any videos in a few months. Life has been busy and I've come to appreciate campaign games that offer the ability to play any scenario whenever you want. Resident Evil opens the doors of the Spencer Mansion wide open and allows you to explore its entirety from the very beginning. The scenario book lets you know how to set every scenario up as a standalone mission. You'll have every tool you need to get the job done. You can still follow the campaign as you make your way through the mansion before running out of time. How you decide to explore the Spencer Mansion is completely up to you. There are only two bosses in the core box, Lisa Trevor and the Tyrant. I say this is a mix because there are still 19 scenarios that can be played as a campaign or as a standalone scenario. Apart from that, Exploring the mansion is awesome, and unlocking doors as well as solving puzzles are just as fun and addictive as it is in the video game. I liked it so much that I purchased the Bleak Outpost expansion because I wanted to fight Plant 42 and Neptune. Even without it, I would have been happy. Too bad I can't find the Into the Darkness expansion. I would like to complete the entire collection of content. Even so, what is in the core box is great, it's just missing a few things. You're able to explore all that the Spencer Mansion has to offer solo and it works. It works really well. It does a great job of giving you the feeling that the video game gives you. Nothing is lost in this mode and it makes the survival horror of Resident Evil truly shine. To be honest, I really had a hard time finding things I didn't like about this game. It has everything I would have ever wanted from a Resident Evil board game. As a longtime fan, I can see what was done here, and what was done here is great. I could tell that the people who made this game truly have a love for Resident Evil. They respected the franchise, and not only were they faithful to the source material, but the way they translated the game to board game form was done masterfully. That insert, however, was pretty bad. Too many times companies look over their inserts, and sadly, that was the issue here. You're going to need to find your own storage solution to get this game to the table without it feeling like work. The tiles still look very dark, as well as the tokens. 3D terrain completely fixes this issue, but I'm aware that not everyone is going to have some 3D terrain doors laying around their house. Being able to play any scenario as a standalone really helps those of us who find it difficult to commit to a campaign. Thankfully, the campaign here, it shines. Solving puzzles and exploring the Spencer Mansion is great fun. Even with just two bosses in the core box, there's still plenty here to explore and enjoy. The Bleak Outpost is a great expansion worthy to be added to the game. On top of that, it has an outstanding true solo mode. Nothing is lost and it feels like you're playing the video game in board game form. Outstanding. Well, that's it. 
This was Solo Board Gaming Night. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that you and everyone else has a great game night. Take care, Solo Knights.